So hi guys, it's Alex from Forest Creative Films. So today we're going to be taking a look at the LG OLED 55 C10, uh, also known as the CX. They kind of follow the iPhone convention of by using an X instead of using the number 10. Um, I'm going to be taking a look at some different streaming services and also gaming on the PS4 Pro. We'll pop a few different games in there, some that support HDR and other ones that don't, and take a look at what the differences are. Uh, I also have a set-top box hooked up uh, with the local cable provider. It's uh, KPN, so we can take a look at how uh, the TV actually does with some upscaling. Uh, I have to say, one of my favorite things about this TV when I first got it definitely has to be the Magic Remote. Specifically, these two buttons get used a lot. So we have a button that's dedicated to Netflix, and we have a button that's dedicated to Amazon Prime. And one of the most beautiful things about this TV is literally you press the button and the service is just instantly active. No waiting, no lag, it, it's phenomenal. So I think the best thing to do is just to, uh, to pop on the TV and hop right into it. Uh, we'll also take a little bit of the look, a look of uh, the reflections, how it works with different light sources in the home and things like that. Um, I've been waiting till nighttime to get a good shots of the TV and to show you guys really the TV in its full glory. Uh, and I'm also planning on getting some daytime shots in the next coming days to kind of show, okay, how does this actually perform in the daylight? I did read that it has a 720 nits of brightness, so it's one of the brightest OLED screens available at the moment, and you can really notice it. So I think the best thing to do is just let's hop right in and take a look. So LG is some of the least reflective OLED displays available at the moment. But due to OLED's integrated structure, they always have to deal with some type of reflection. This is due to an anti-reflective coating, which is actually glossy. It's much less annoying in dark rooms, uh, but if you're watching bright content, you can also easily watch it in a bright room. Uh, the coating also helps to maintain colors and contrast. And just to give you guys an idea of how the reflection works, currently the lights in front of me are on, but the lights behind me are turned off. Let me just turn two lights on uh, via the Philips Hue system. And as you can see, slightly off center to the left of the middle of the screen, you'll see two lights uh, that have come on. I'll turn them off again. So let's jump straight into some content. I'm gonna begin with the news, then we can take a look at some different streaming services, and then a few games. So if I turn on the TV, this is regular 1080p content, and this is currently being upscaled to 4K by the TV itself. Then if we move over to Netflix, this is the new Code 8 and it's HDR content. I have to say, the moment the HDR kicks in, you can really notice some deep blacks and also anything that's emitting light, the lighter colors, they really pop on the screen. So let's run for a little while. The screen's actually been rated by flatpanelshd.com as having a 96% uh, score for picture quality and its maximum brightness is about 740 nits. And as you can see, these scenes are quite dark and everything is just really, really popping. So one of my favorite things about this TV is the fact that it's so easy and so fast to switch between different services. If I press a dedicated button for Amazon Prime, it's just there instantly. It's phenomenally fast. It's really, really great to be able to jump between different services and not have that lag that you have with a lot of smart TVs. So this one is using WebOS, and we'll hop into some content now on Amazon Prime. Yeah, this is a great scene to show. You can really see beautiful color, beautiful color representation. Everything is just snappy. I have literally never seen a TV that's looked as good as this. especially the detail in her face uh, as she walks. It's quite a dark, uh, she's quite dark in it, but it looks just really, really great. A lot of detail in there. Then if we move across to some Dolby uh, HDR content on Disney Plus, So Avengers Endgame. What's great about this TV is it notices also what kind of content you're playing and it will automatically change it. So as you can see in the top right corner, this has been recognized as Dolby Vision content. And everything that's dark just looks beautifully dark and everything that's light just looks really, really bright and crispy. 
phenomenal. So the main reason I got this TV was actually primarily for gaming. So if we hop over to the PlayStation 4, it's the PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, I'm going to take a look at FIFA, uh, some Spider-Man, and some God of War. We can take a look at different kinds of games on here. So these bright poppy colors is all to do with the dynamic tone mapping that's in here. That's what gives every, all the colors that beautiful, beautiful look. As you can see, it's also throwing me across into game mode. Uh, the picture modes that I use are primarily game, expert dark for when I'm uh, watching TV at night, or expert light uh, when it's bright outside. I tend to find that those are the best modes that actually work on here. For example, the, the first mode you'll probably see is either natural or vivid. Those are the standard modes on this TV. Uh, vivid is just way too bright. Everything is overly saturated. Um, and natural is a little bit too subdued. You don't really get that HDR feel with it. If you have to compare it to other TVs, I always find that LG and Sony tend to have the most natural colors. And if, for example, when you look at a Samsung, uh, everything is always overly bright. And that vivid picture mode on the LG kind of gives me a bit of that Samsung feeling. Yeah, specifically in there, that, that, that red just is really deep red. One thing I've noticed also now that the dynamic tone mapping is on is that uh, because of the deep color, the 4K screen, um, and the HDR effect, you can really see the, the feet of the players and the shadows and everything. And I've noticed that my, my FIFA ability is not that great, but I have been playing better since we've gotten this TV. I'm sitting also about two meters away from it. I'm going, I came from a 42 inch and this is a 55 inch, so the fact that the screen is simply just bigger and sharper probably has a lot to do with the, the skills, especially in a game like FIFA. It's very important to see the placement of the different players' feet uh, in relation to the ball and in relation to other players to be able to play this game well. So let's see if maybe I can uh, score a goal here before moving on to the next game. It's not going to work today. All right, let's pop out of here. And we'll move across to God of War. Something else that uh, LG is also um, using quite well is black, flame, black frame insertion, uh, BFI. So what it essentially does is BFI <clears throat> and inserts black frames into the video stream to reset the human eye, so things end up looking less blurry. Um, and everything's kind of being processed by this third generation Alpha 9 processor. Uh, so specifically, it has that improved dynamic tone mapping system. So it kind of tweaks the luminance, the contrast of the HDR, depending on the, the content and the scene that you have. So this TV makes a lot of use of AI, also for the sound, to reproduce the best picture and the best audio possibly can. Although I have to say, my opinion is the speakers are not that great. I do have it set up uh, with a Sonos Play Bar. And I find that the Sonos Play Bar really adds to that cinematic effect. So I can tell the, uh, the PlayStation is really having to work here. <laughs> the fans are really going at it. But as you can see, it's, it's just crispy, it's sharp. Um, during games, you really get more of a cinematic effect, which is lovely. It's a cutscene right here, but it is rendered in game. So, this also has things like Dolby, Atmos. Um, it's not supported by the play bar. Actually, instead of taking a look at Spider-Man, let's hop into an arcade game.
One, one of the things I really enjoyed about having this TV uh, is playing some of the older arcade games. So as you see, when you actually enter a game that supports HDR, in the top right, you do have the symbol of HDR pop up. And I've played hours of this in the last couple of weeks since, uh, since getting the TV. Just because, it's, well, it's a great game, but it's so much fun to play uh, with those bright colors and that great representation. So also for gaming, this, uh, the screen is G-Sync compatible. So with NVIDIA, games are clearer, have less lag and less flickering. It does support HDMI 2.1 for the next generation of consoles, and that has a 48 gigabytes per second uh, bandwidth, which also makes it uh, better uh, for synchronization with your images and your gaming machine and shows stuff in a higher resolution, but also a higher frame rate. And the best thing, especially for games like FIFA or any other competitive game, uh, or games like, like this of what I'm loading up now is that it has actually a very low lag with a response time of one millisecond, which is phenomenal. Any game that requires uh, you to react very, very quickly to whatever's happening really benefits from that low, low lag. So if you're looking for a TV that's great, a great home cinema option, but also great for gaming, then, then you really can't go wrong with this, uh, this TV. Absolutely phenomenal. So other obviously great things about uh, screens like this OLED is that uh, the off center viewing angle uh, is, is, is phenomenal as well. I'm actually gonna pop into that and then um, I will show you a couple of close-ups of uh, some different screens so that we can see how sharp the detail actually is. All right, so to get an idea of the angles that you can actually watch this TV on, I've put it way off to the side. One of the series I've been watching that I've been really enjoying is Unorthodox on Netflix. Let's hop into a few scenes here. Uh, as you can see, it just, uh, from any angle, this screen just looks phenomenal. So I'm gonna pause it here. I'm also gonna try and get the camera a little bit closer to see if we can zoom in on some of the 4K content. So now I've got the camera right up against the screen, taking a look at a little bit of Blue Planet. And it's beautiful. It's crispy, it's smooth, it looks natural. It really is almost like just having, uh, well, when someone's actually on the screen, it's like having a real person almost in front of you and having everything unfold in front of you. It's, it's a very, very different experience, and much more as a cinema experience to watch films uh, or even to play games on this screen than, uh, than, a, than a regular TV screen, like an LCD or an LED. All right, so let's hop into WebOS. This is very cool. You have all these apps down here, a lot of different streaming services. There are also some third-party apps like AccuWeather uh, or Earth Online. Uh, although I have to say, I don't like many of the third-party apps, like uh, most of those standard integrated apps, such as Disney+, Plus, Apple TV, Netflix, they all work really well, especially with the, with the Magic Remote, that you can just kind of move the mouse around uh, by waving the remote left to right. Uh, one of the things I do really like here is that it's possible to actually add a YouTube channel here to your home screen. So if I, for example, look for my own channel, are at to home. I can choose where I want to put it. Put it right at the front. And now very simply, all I have to do is click it. 
and I'm straight in my YouTube channel. So the unboxing was also filmed in 4K, and as you can see, it looks great. Very, very lifelike. Another thing that I really enjoy about this, uh, this TV is the fact that it actually has Apple uh, TV integrated in it. So uh, if I do want to uh, send my phone screen across the TV with AirPlay and HomeKit, it is possible to mirror my screen. So here we're looking at one of the screensavers that's actually on the LG TV. Uh, let's hop into uh, some different options. Uh, I want to take a look at screen mirroring. So if it's like screen mirroring on my Apple device, then I actually can use my Apple device here on the LG TV. So for example, if I want to take a look at uh, Instagram uh, with more people in the room, well, this is uh, a great option to, to be able to do that. So that's pretty cool. And obviously also any video content or photos that I have on my phone, I can also share with other people via, via this TV. So before this, I actually used an Apple TV to do this, uh, but I was able to give that away to my parents because I don't need it anymore. And as you can see here in the home dashboard, I also have a lot of IoT uh, devices connected. So here on the right side, you see all my, uh, my smart uh, lights, the Philips Hue lights. I can control different optical audio settings. I can see all the different uh, HDMI ports that are being used. Uh, and one feature that's a little bit hidden is this one, and it's for input. So here is actually where I can configure different devices. Uh, one of the issues with the Sonos is that Sonos is actually not automatically configured uh, to be used via the optical audio out. out. Um, it is in terms of sound, but for example, if I actually wanted to use my Magic Remote as a universal remote, apparently the best thing to use is to use the Philips profile, and this is the way I got it working. Although when I did add the universal remote to my set-top box, then I lost the function of being able to control my sound with the, uh, with the LG Magic remote. So that was uh, a little bit difficult in the beginning, especially if you're using a soundbar like a Sonos system, which isn't, uh, isn't supported out of the box. But yeah, lots of options. It's pretty great. Uh, oh, yeah, one more thing that's important to look at is those different picture modes. So if we just go back into Netflix for now, and we go to picture modes. So right now it's on Dolby Vision. Let's try and find some content that's not Dolby Vision or necessarily HDR. Oh, it's Dolby Vision as well. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go straight back into regular TV because the options you get are based on the content that you're watching. So here we go. So as I said, the modes that I use most often, uh, and I'm generally the kind of person that tinkers with the different modes and uh, makes them to my, my custom liking. This is the first TV I've ever had that I've not had to do that. Um, this is the Vivid TV mode. As you can see, everything is really blown out. Uh, it doesn't look natural at all. Then we have Standard, or a more natural mode. Eco, Cinema. Cinema gives everything a little bit of a yellow tinge. It looks nice, it's very relaxing to the eyes, but it's not uh, that kind of crispy, crispy image that I really prefer myself. Then if we go to sports, everything is very blown out, uh, very colorful. Um, I haven't been able to test it with any sports at the moment due to the coronavirus situation, but I'd love to watch some, uh, some football with this, or soccer, as it's known in the US. Then the game mode. Uh, game mode has a very low input lag uh, and turns off a lot of the motion smoothing. HDR effect. This is kind of cool. I've been using this a little bit to kind of create more contrast in my image. Filmmaker mode. Now this is interesting. Essentially the whole idea behind it is that you actually see the image as it was intended by the filmmaker. So this is one of the film modes that I've been using with some content. Then you have expert bright room and expert dark room. If you get this TV, I highly recommend you mostly stay in expert bright room and expert dark room. I even find that the expert dark room, that's what it's set to at the moment, is better than the filmmaker mode. Filmmaker mode, uh, it looks nice, uh, but if your content is not set up for filmmaker mode, it loses a little bit of its potency and brightness. 
Whereas with dark, uh, you can easily see in a dark room, everything looks very nice. It's also not overly lit uh, because if you have a very light screen, a very bright screen in a dark room, um, it's, it's not very comfortable for your eyes. So when it's sunny outside, we have the windows open, then I generally use the expert bright room mode. So these, these modes um, out of the box are, are phenomenal, are really phenomenal. Haven't had to tinker at all. So let's run through them one more time. So we got Vivid, Standard, Eco, Cinema, Sports, Game, HDR Effect, Filmmaker Mode, Expert Bright, and Expert Dark. So if we hop back into Netflix um, and we hop into something that's uh, Dolby Vision content, HDR Dolby Vision, you can see that the options have changed. So now when I click settings and I go into picture options, I only have five options and these all fall under Dolby Vision uh, picture modes. So we have game, vivid, standard, cinema home, and cinema uh, user. So let's keep it on cinema home for a second. Uh, let's say I wanted to actually change one of these settings and uh, tweak it to my own liking. Then instead of just pressing the settings button once, if I hold down the settings button, then I get a pop-up screen with a little bit more options. And then I can go into additional settings or change, for example, the screen saver, energy settings. Uh, I have more controls uh, to do with general controls or the connection, uh, accessibility, and it can even get support here. So yeah, all around, uh, the TV is phenomenal. It is a little bit expensive because of the, uh, the, the production process currently for OLEDs. OLED should be coming down in price a little bit in the future due to a new inkjet print, printing method. Uh, but I have to say, even though it was quite expensive, I do not regret it for one second. We've been having to stay home a little bit because of the coronavirus situation. Uh, and my wife is pregnant, so we can't really go to the cinema anymore. And this is the perfect alternative to actually really have that true cinema experience in your home and to have complete control over all these different picture modes and settings and just tweak it to your own liking. Um, it's phenomenal. It really, really is phenomenal. So if you decide to buy it, you will not regret it at all. And obviously we didn't take a look at it, but it's also set up to Plex to stream movies and series from my computer. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm also kind of curious to see what kind of picture modes, um, but which picture modes you guys prefer. And in the coming weeks, if I find that I want to tweak my picture modes, I will share those settings with you here on my channel. So thanks for watching.